he was unhappy that William Ruto is a performer and therefore he wanted to cut him to size. It was unnecessary. I will be bringing energy to the presidency. I will be complimenting Dr. William Ruto. I will be supporting him. He is more than happy to have a good worker, somebody focused, somebody hardworking like himself, so that with the combined effort, because that is what this country needs. This country is in such a bad situation. It needs serious workers. You can't want a deputy who is just there, who is not a worker, who is not a performer. So I want to assure the people of Kenya that uh, the issues we saw between President Uru Kenyatta and Dr. William Ruto will not be there. I want to t say that with certainty. Me and him have sat and discussed. In any case, he has spelled out my duties quite clearly. And uh, when he does the executive order, number one, my duties will be clearly spelled. In fact, I'm complaining he has allocated me too much work. You know, I'm already fretting, you know, on the workload. You know, he has confidence in me and he's giving me serious responsibilities to be able to help him to govern this country and to turn around the economy. So I want to tell the people of Kenya to be assured that we'll have synergy, we'll work in a good partnership and we complement each other. And mine is to support the president. Mine is to back him up. Mine is to make sure that the roles he assigned me are implemented with military precision. Mine is to make sure that the country is moving in the right direction. And mine is also to keep my ear to the ground, to listen to what people are saying and advise him appropriately. And luckily for Dr. William Ruto, he's a good listener. And he takes advice, you know, with humility. And he doesn't take offense when we tell him this and this, what he's doing probably is not right, probably Kenyans are not happy. He takes it in good stride. So, and that is a mark of leadership. The ability to listen, agreeing to be advised, agreeing to be corrected, and agreeing to have a discussion with your juniors. You know, when you respect your juniors and uh, you treat them with respect and acknowledging that they also have some brains, then work becomes very easy. You know, Dr. William Ruto has respect for the people under him. He has tremendous respect for all of us. Even young members of parliament, he gives them time and he listens to them. And many a time he has taken a position. And some junior members of parliament have advised him against it. And he has, you know, with happiness and heartily agreed to the advice. So I am sure that uh, we'll have a government that is full of consultation and consensus and that is what will make us succeed by consulting regularly by agreeing to disagree by having meetings and uh, you know staying with our members of parliament discussing with our governors having many parliamentary groups meeting and meetings allowing people to prevail and people to discuss freely so that they can you know inform him and he can get better knowledge to assist him in decision making. As the incoming deputy president, do you, do you actually think uh, maybe there should be a constitutional amendment just to make sure that the roles of the deputy president are constitutionally defined such that we just don't leave it open to be like an assistant of the president? Do you think the well, roles should be constitutional? Probably in future, but for now it's not necessary. My duties uh, will be well spread out in the, ex in the executive uh, circular, you know, and uh, me and William Ruto, we have agreed what I need to do. In fact, I am already feeling the heat of what he has allocated me. So for now, it's okay. But probably because of future, you may get another president like Uru Kenyatta, who has no regard for his deputy. Probably going forward, that is food for thought. It's something that our lawmakers need to look at so that we don't have a situation like we had between Uru Kenyatta and William Ruto. But in our case, because of the kind of personalities that we are, we are fine and we are okay. But for posterity, I think it's food for thought. Uh, maybe before I let you go uh, to join your family in the Thanksgiving ceremony, uh, we saw uh, uh, a letter released yesterday by the Azimio Lomoja presidential candidate, Raila Odinga, saying that he will not be attending the inauguration ceremony of the fifth president and you as the deputy president for various reasons that he outlined. Uh, what do you think of that? What is your What are your thoughts on that? And also, what do you have to tell Kenyans on this particular day so that I can let you go? I don't think Raila Odinga is uh, one of our concerns. I mean, surely, be fair to us, we have a country to run. <laughs> we have a 10 trillion public debt, 14 million Kenyans in CRB, 6 million unemployed people, imaginable, you know, uh, 
prices of uh, food commodities. Where would we get time to bother about Raila Odinga? Raila Odinga is a Kenyan. He's a senior citizen. He's free to do what he wants. Yeah, but he's really. I must tell you, he is not among our priorities. And and really, we are not really bothered. Yeah, because we have 